y'all. Hey, we are back for another review of Tyler Perry's Sisters on BET. We're at Season 2, Episode 11. Let's just jump right in. Alright, so last episode, Andy, not Andy, what's his face? Gary. Andy turns around to Gary. He done popped up on the couch, child. And he want to know where she's been, who she's talking to, who she's sleeping with. Just all these questions that have nothing to do with his life. Um... And he wants to know, you know, who'd you call? Why'd you call him over here? Is that the man that's sending my money? Like, just giving her the, the third degree, giving her grief about Paris. And she's just realizing in her, in her body, like, I'm in danger, Molly, and I need to get out. So she is trying to pacify him and say enough to get him out of the house. Trust me, I know she don't want to ruffle his feathers no more, but she want to be nice enough to get out of the situation. Which is smart, so he don't kill you, sis. All right, so she is, um, she lets us know that she's taking her key back from him, so she's not sure how he got in her house, which is my question last episode, because, girl, why did you tell Ken he don't got no key when he did have a key? Well, she took it back from him at some point. I must have missed that. I must have um, blinked too hard and missed that part in some previous episode last season. But, um, dude said he had made copies, and he got lots of copies, and he's here, and he want to talk. And, um, yeah, so that is red flag number 6,722, Andy. This man that made copies of the key. And so she is, she makes the mistake of telling him that she's going to call the cops and that she's going to change the locks. And that further, you know, en en enrages him. And, um, so now he's in a, in a mad dash to get her phone. So he snatches the phone out of her hands. He wants his money back. And, um... You know, she tells him, you know, this, he thinks, he tells her, you know, you can't leave me like this. And she's like, who said that this was over? You know, we all know it's over. She wants to be done, but she can't tell him in this moment. Like, I'm, I'm done. She claims she needs to process everything, um, or whatever. And then he snatches her phone, wants to know who she was talking to, because he was in the house while she was talking to Paris. And he wants to know who you were talking to. And he kind of, you know, bursts up at her and tells her, you better unlock this phone. And that should have been, you know. Yet another red flag as to he could likely beat your ass, basically. Um, so she opens the door to, to usher him out. You know, I think she's calmed her down because she told him, I'm going to meet you at the bank, give you your money tomorrow. Just, you know, go home, chill out, leave me the hell alone. And um, she opens the door let, to let him out and Paris walks up. And um, so Gary is back upset again and he... He's trying to regulate who can be there, telling Paris that he needs to go. And um, he, he grabs Andy and then Paris and Gary get into a fist fight. Boop, boop, bop, bop, fight, 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 ensues, moving on. All right, so Fatima gets home and she's looking for Zach and he's still at the job site. He hasn't come home from earlier in the night. Um, and he claims that he's going to work through the night and he's going to stay there. Um, just, just kind of being real weird and standoffish with Fatima. So I've come to the, the, the conclusion that he, he's let Hayden get into his head and he doesn't want to go home because Hayden has threatened what he is basically been working towards this whole time by way of saying, you know, don't let your relationship with Fatima cost you your job at this job site. So now he needs, he feels like he needs to, in order to save you know, his, his job or what he's been striving towards, he needs to distance himself from, from distance himself from Fatima. All right. So let's go back to Andy's house. Back at Andy's house, the police are on the way and Gary doesn't care nothing about going to jail. He just needs to get his point across. Um, but she finally gets him to leave, you know, once agreeing to meet him at the bank in the morning. So that's what she told him. Um, I'm going to meet you at the bank in the morning. It's going to be all right. We're going to be done. We get your money back. Relax. Okay. So, Karen gets home. So, basically, everybody's kind of going back to their respective homes after the night out. After um, Andy has made her great announcement that she's gotten her job back. Karen gets home and Aaron's asleep on the couch. And they're cuddling on the couch, pillow talking. Get up. They go get in the bed. Go to sleep. Uneventful at best. All right. So, Andy is icing Paris's hand. And he wants to know, like, how do you end up with a guy like Gary? Like, you're smart, you're beautiful, you don't deserve this type of treatment. She deserves better. And she low-key really doesn't want to hear what he has to say. Um, and she asks him to leave because she's tired, and he just kisses on the forehead, and he leaves. 
Child Pierce is, is pretty much done with the situation because he didn't have to whip somebody's ass and he he ain't got time. Right? So, let's jump on over to Danny's house. She didn't got back. She didn't got showered. She feeling cute or whatever. She's talking to the cowboy and she offers him some handcuff play. Um, you know, offers to have a little sex or whatnot. And he tells her that she could have hepatitis because of the um the booty the booty bandit bartender. And she looked at him like, what? what are you talking about? It's a very extreme. And and he's dead serious. She's like, no, you know, she probably get tested, checked out. You know, there's a lot going on. I don't know what he had. So we not have sex at all, which which is definitely reasonable. Reasonable, in my opinion. Um, And, he, you know, while they're just laying things on the table, he also lets her know, I don't want to be called white boy. Um, So they're just sitting there saying what they don't want to be called. Just kind of um, talking about what they like, their preferences, things such as that, what they want to call, what they don't want to be called. Um, just getting a better feel for each other, chair. Wonderful. All right. Moving right along. Sabrina shows up at Maurice's. She didn't go home. She, she shows up to Maurice's and she is drunk as a skunk. Um, she's babbling about seeing Kevin with another woman and him wanting to commit and her not being comfortable doing that right now. And, um, Maurice is basically over Sabrina shit, Calvin shit. Much like myself. He's over the whole situation. And, he, you know, he gives her some simple advice. Girl, follow your heart. Simple. Simple yet effective. Um, if you don't want to commit, don't. And if you want to commit, do. Simple. If you have questions about drug use, ask them. Just very simple, straightforward answers that will solve all of your life's issues at this point. Um, and he, and he, tell, he tells her that she complicates shit that don't need to be complicated. And I would agree. I would agree. She she overcomplicates things by way of other people's opinions. Oh well, Danny, what do you think? Oh well, you think you think so? Da, 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 da. And then taking that as law and then acting on that instead of just going directly to the person or, or whatever, whatnot. So um, as she's sitting there, she's drunk, she's stumbling, she's leaning all over Marcus, and she notices that there's blood on his hands. And now he, you know, he has to tell her what happened between him and Alonzo, him and Alonzo outside of the bank. And, um, he basically brags about wearing, wearing Alonzo's ass out and shows her footage on the cameras from the bank. And Sabrina, you know, she's drunk, but she's looking at the camera. She's like, well, go to the real time camera. And he does. And she realizes it's like, okay, yeah, you, you beat his ass about an hour or so ago, but, um, he's still laying down there. He might be dead. You probably killed him, Maurice. And, um, at first Maurice is like, okay, wonderful. I had a restraining order. Good luck to hell with him. I don't, I don't care. And, um, and so, you know, I guess as they're sitting there talking about it, he realized, okay, well, this man's dead. I'm probably going to go to jail. Let me just check and see if he's still alive. So, that is where they're headed. Yeah. All right. So, moving on. Calvin is trying to have sex with the girl from the bar, restaurant, wherever they were at earlier in the night. And it ain't working. He ain't working. Nothing's working out. He has Sabrina on his mind. And homegirl tells her, tells him, that Sabrina likes him and she really cares about him. And she picked that up from the way that they, you know, kept exchanging glances or whatever that was. She picked up on something in the restaurant and she tells her, and Calvin doesn't believe it because Sabrina doesn't want to commit at this moment. Um, and she tells her, you know, maybe, maybe she's afraid of the unknown. Maybe she does love you, but she's afraid, you know, of wasting her time and all these different scenarios. And, you know, she's, she's got a point. She's definitely got a point um, because, you know, just because she didn't want to commit in that second does not mean she doesn't want to continue working up to a commitment because it doesn't seem like it's been a grand span of time since y'all ran into each other, but I don't know, Chad. It's just, it's just a lot. That, that, that whole saga, I don't know how this is going to work out. I hope it does one way or another just so I can be done with them too. All right, moving right along. Andy is in the bed sleeping and she hears some noise in the house. Child, it's Gary. Gary done used another copy of his key and he done came back. Gary is sitting at the counter having himself a drink and he just he just needs answers. He wants to know why she treated him so badly and, you know, is he is she in cahoots with Jasmine? Like, what? He, he needs answers and Andy needs to give it to him in this moment. Um... 
And then, you know, he's not getting what he needs, but he, but he says, hey, let's just go lay down. We'll, we'll figure it out in the morning. Um, we'll, Like, nothing ever happened. Let's just, let's just lay down. He's, he's drunk, but he really, I don't know if he's drunk, but he has been drinking. And he's just already, he wants answers. He ain't getting them, so he wants to go lay down with her. Um, And then, you know, like I said, he thinks she's in on the plan with Jasmine and Morris. And, um... When earlier in the episode when she claimed she called the cops, the cops never showed up. So to Gary, that means you never called the cops, which means you still love me. Because if you had called the cops, I wouldn't be here. So you still love me. Exactly. Um, when you said you was calling the cops, you should have called the cops. Because now you've given him another false sense of hope in the situation. But, child, yeah. Gary is too far gone at this stage of the game, so it wouldn't have mattered to you the goddamn way. Um, she offers him the couch. Okay, you know, lay on the couch, sleep it off. We'll figure out what's out tomorrow. I'll give your money back, and we will go from there. Um, and, you know, he's like, okay, I'll lay on the couch. And she hugs him. And then she's hugging him. It's getting uncomfortable, and she's like, all right, Gary. You know, you squeeze me a little too tight. Let me go. And he still continues to squeeze her, and he's like, you know, still crying, he's still upset, and he's still squeezing her. She's like, Gary, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And she, you know, keeps reiterating, like, this is uncomfortable. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And it seems as if she has passed out. It seems as Gary has squeezed the entire life out of Andy at this point. So, yeah. But I will tell you, it's based on the previews for the season, the mid-season finale, which is next Wednesday, she ain't dead. She in, she's in the bed looking bewildered like, I can't believe he squeezed me unconscious. Now, I don't know if he probably squeezed her unconscious and then she woke up in the bed and he thought he killed her. So, that's why he later runs himself off the road or what appears to be off the road. But, um, yeah. So, this should be your final and utter last straw because it is for me. All right. So, Fatima goes to the job site to see why the hell Zach never came home considering this is your only home. And um, Zach's sitting there looking dumb, and he's worried that he's going to mess up his opportunity by staying at her place. He doesn't really say that to her, but Hayden has gotten into his head, and now he is um, hes shocked that she feels some kind of way about him not coming home, considering they were on a good page um, just hours earlier. And so he wants to say Hayden's impact. He wants to say why he's distancing himself. And Fatima wants to say why she wants him around so bad. She likes him. He likes her. But now there is a fork in the road. They all, it's all on the, it's on the tip of both of their tongues, but they don't say anything. So Fatima leaves and Zach is there looking crazy as usual. All right. Moving right along. Sabrina and Marius get back to the bank. And Alonzo is still knocked out, child. And <laughs> Alonzo is still knocked out on the ground next to his car. Sabrina, you know, she she she's a good Samaritan. She wants to make sure he's not dead. Um, and so Morris tells her, shit, kick him. Kick his ass and see if he's if he's dead or not. So she kicks him and I don't know if he moved a tiny bit or if his leg just fell from the kick. But um, Marius is like, kick him again. So they're just trying to look for signs of life at this point. And he doesn't move after a few kick kicks. So she tells him, all right, give him my phone. It's time to call the ambulance. You know, he might be hurt. He might be, you know, real bad hurt. I need to call the ambulance. So Maurice gives her her phone and then pieces out on her. Maurice tells her, good luck, good riddance. I got to go. I'm not going to jail for killing this boy. Throws her purse out the window and hits it. Maurice is out of there. He is gone. And I don't even, logically, I don't understand why. You were already gone from the situation. Came back and left again. So even if you are innocent, you are proving the case by continuing to leave the goddamn scene of the crime. Stay your ass still and present your self-defense case and go on with your life. But child, Maurice hit it. Maurice is out of there. He is gone and he no longer has time for the shit. He told Sabrina, find, you know, Good luck. Hopefully he ain't dead, but I gotta go. And Maurice, Maurice said the girl, and he left her. He left the girl out there. Oh, that was funny to me. All right. Moving on. So, Aaron is in the bed with Karen, and his phone is just blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. And Karen's like, you know, get up. Your phone, you know, blowing up. Maybe you should get up and answer and see what's going on. Somebody from his men's group, I'm assuming by way of the church, is calling. Well, it turns out it's Gary. Gary is calling Aaron, so that is how those two are connected. Because I don't 
think I ever had a connection for Gary and Aaron. Um, no. Gary and Aaron never had a connection up until this moment, if I'm not mistaken. So he's rambling on and on about, you know, she know I love her, but she she got another man. I told you I wasn't going to be able to do it. You told me to end it with Jasmine before I got involved with Andy, but I didn't listen. Now look at me. I've done something really, really, really bad. Um, and Aaron just kind of tell him, you know, God will forgive you. He don't want he don't want to hear nothing about it. Um, and so Karen's kind of overhearing the conversation and she realizes that Gary is talking to Aaron. Aaron is talking to Gary and she was like, Was that and is Gary? Oh da, da, da. so she puts the connection together and realizes that Gary is saying that he's done something bad too. Andy. So she calls Andy, leaves a voicemail. Obviously, Andy's not going to answer, so she's trying to figure out what's going on. Gary is still irate on the phone talking to Aaron, you know, saying, I did something really bad. And as he's trying to tell Aaron what he did wrong, he steps on the throttle and he's speeding his car and it's, it appears as if he has crashed his car. Um, so he is he's overcome with emotion at what he has done. All right. That's cool and all. But what I will say is, BET people, BET people, the previews gave it away. And I'm just used to shows, their preview not giving it away, just giving me a little bit. Y'all gave it away. And I say that because we could have we could have assumed that both Andy and Gary were dead because Gary crashed his car and killed himself. And he suffocated Andy by way of, you know, constricting her in that hug. Um... But in the in the previews for the Misses the finale, we see Andy meet with Gary at the bank, which I'm assuming is to give him this money back so she can be done with the situation. So, you know, Gary probably just hurt herself in the accident and Andy probably just passed out from the from the massive squeeze and we're hopefully gonna be done with the situation. So we will see what happens in episode twelve, also the Misses the finale. And um and they're um, yeah, now if Alonzo's dead, I have no bone in that fight. I don't really give a damn. All right, so that's it. That's all. Um, that was season eleven. That was not season eleven. That was season two, episode eleven of Sisters on BET, and I will see y'all in the mid-season finale on next week. Peace.